So as the first example, let's look at our common emitter amplifier. Um, this is the circuit that we're dealing with. The input is connected to the base. The output is connected to the collector. In this case, because we want to calculate input impedance, it doesn't matter where is the output. We only care about where is the input. Uh, I have taken, so if I wanted to extend this circuit, I've already talked about these notations, but it doesn't hurt to actually draw this circuit completely. So this is my VN connected to this space of the amplifier, and it, involve, it, it includes both DC and AC, by the way. Uh, I have shorted this V into ground, and then I replaced it. Well, not shorted. I just re removed the input source, and I replaced it with this VX at the input and IX at, that is flowing through it. Uh, and, of course, I have first drawn the small signal model of my circuit. That's why we learned about this small signal model, because anything that has to do with gain and input and output impedance is a small signal parameter. So we have to actually deal with them uh, using the small signal circuit. You have to calculate them using the small signal circuit. So first, so number one, step one, is to actually draw the small signal circuit. Number two is really adding this Vx and Ix. And number three is to actually find the relationship between Vx and Ix. And in this case, it's actually very, very simple. So Vx, if I want to write a KVL here, I write uh, plus Vx minus Ix times R pi um, is equal to zero because the emitter is here and it's zero, right? I just wrote the KCL, uh, sorry, a KVL. Therefore, I can say that um, R pi is equal to Vx divided by R I, Ix. And I'm done. So this means that my Rn, input resistance, or my input impedance, I'm going to use these two terms interchangeably. Uh, they mean the same thing as long as you don't have any reactants in your circuit. You, you don't have any capacitors and inductors in your circuit, which we don't in this course. So R in or Z in is going to be equal to R pi. So for a common emitter amplifier, looking into the base, I have an input resistance seen uh, that is equal to R pi. And I know how to calculate R pi. That's just bit over GM, and I know what is GM. Um, you might think, well, I have all these stuff here. That doesn't matter. The answer is no. As long as you find the relationship between Vx and Ix, you're pretty much done. There's no reason for you to actually overcomplicate things. And uh, the other good news for you guys is that most of the time, as I said before, unlike the electrical circuits, where we actually, for every new transistor, I actually had to redo everything and do the KCLs and KVLs, with electronic circuits, we really need to actually find what is different between the, the situation that we are dealing with and the situation that we know its answer, right? So in the future, if anybody asks us, what is the resistance looking into the base of this BJT, this bipolar device, knowing that the emitter is grounded. If the emitter is not grounded, we're going to have a bigger problem, and we're going to see that problem, like how, how it's going to be different uh, in this lecture later on. But if you have a transistor that the emitter is grounded, you can see that always the input resistance is going to be R pi. So you don't have to actually draw this small signal model anymore. You don't have to actually write the KVL or doing anything. You know that it's R pi, right? Now, what would be the variation from this? Imagine that the circuit looked like this. You had some resistance at the base, let's call that RB, and then you had this VN. And then somebody asked you, what is the RN looking here? Well, you know that RN is going to be RB in series with whatever you see here. Let's call that RN2. So you know that RN is going to be RB plus RN2. And, well, this is going to be equal to Rb. And I, I know R in 2 is just going to be R pi. So plus R pi. And I'm done. I didn't need to draw, redraw the small signal model. I didn't need to re rewrite the KVLs or anything. Um, to be fair, initially you have to do all of those stuff. But what I'm trying to tell you is that after a while, you don't really need to draw the small signal. You're going to see the input impedance. You're going to see the gain. You're going to, like, even, like, looking at this circuit, you're going to see what's going to be the gain and what's going to be the input and output resistance. Simply because you have done the simpler version or a different version of the circuit some way, and then you know the gain of a common emitter, so you, you know that, uh, well, how what should be changed to actually get 
the gain of this new circuit or the input resistance or output resistance of this new circuit so in this case i just knew that well whatever rb is it's going to be in series with this rn so it's just going to be rb plus r pi right we're going to see more examples of this uh, variations in gain variations in, in input and output resistance later so that you will get used to this idea that you don't have to write kcls and kvls every time you're dealing with electronic circuits okay so let's do the second example and this time we want to find the output impedance of my circuit so z out or r out the output resistance now again we're talking about the same circuit so this is v out and V in is a voltage source, just to be clear. Okay, and I have VCC and RC. Step one is uh, drawing the small signal model. So this is the small signal model. Of course, I have to actually add this RC to ground as well. Okay, step two, turn off all the independent sources. So this is really step two. I turned off my V in. And step three is connecting this VX and having a current ix flowing through it so that's step three and step four is well let's analyze the circuit let's actually find out how can i relate vx and ix together um, it looks more more complicated than the z in but it turns out that it's not and the reason is really here so let's focus on this v pi the v pi is the voltage between this node and this node but if you look at if you look at this carefully, you will see that both of those nodes are ground. They're connected to ground. What does that mean? It means that V pi is equal to zero, right? There's no voltage difference between them. Great. So uh, the implication of that would be GM V pi, no matter what is GM, is going to be zero. This current source is not going to have any current. It's going to have a zero current. And one of the most annoying and uh, common mistakes that people do is that whenever they see a current source is zero uh, perhaps in the rush of things they just basically make it short circuit while it's absolutely wrong the zero current means that well there's an open circuit there's no current flowing through that branch so this doesn't exist okay now the circuit became the, the circuit becomes very simple the circuit kind of simplifies to this so i have a vx i have ix flowing through it i have an rc to ground and i have an r naught to ground okay because well emitter is ground so r naught is also connected to ground i don't really need to write kvl for you guys to see that the r out for the tevin and equivalent resistance or the vx over ix here which is equal to r out or z out is just rc in parallel with r not okay if you don't see it just try to write the kvl and you will see why okay so the output impedance looking into the output of looking into the collector of a transistor or a common emitter gain stage is just rc in parallel with r out okay uh, if you want to picture it even without the uh, sig uh, small signal circuit just on this circuit imagine that r out is r not is actually some uh, is a resistance between collector and emitter and you're trying to see the resistance looking into here right so looking into here you have two parallel path parallel uh, the path uh, toward the vcc and the path toward the ground toward vcc you see just an rc and remember vcc is a ground a small signal ground and looking down you'll see just the r naught so both of them are connected on one end to this node and the other end to ground so they're in parallel so you see r naught in parallel with rc but this is a little bit more advanced you're going to learn how to actually look at these circuits without drawing the small signal model maybe by the end of this course or even like another electronic course like 3611 but uh, just for those of you who are interested to know is there any poss is there any way to actually look at this circuit and tell what is the r out without actually drawing the small signal model well this is how you actually picture it for yourself but uh, reviewing what we did here in the slide first we drew the small signal model second we noted that uh, well the independent sources should be grounded so here number three was adding this vx and ix number four was well trying to analyze the circuit and we were lucky this time because well v pi was zero 
therefore GMV pi was zero, therefore I was just left with two resistors. So the, the output resistance is just going to be the parallel combination of these two resistors. So uh, just to see another example, and just for the fun of it, because we have seen what is the resistance looking into the base, it was R pi, looking into the collector, we saw that we see R naught. Let's see what we'd see looking into the emitter. So for a circuit like this, uh, if the collector is connected to VCC, the, the input is connected to the base, and let's say that the output for some reason is connected to the emitter, right? And we're going to see that kind of amplifier later, but just for the practice, let's see what, what kind of a resistance do I see looking into the emitter of a transistor. Uh, the, the steps are going to be the same. I don't care where is the V in and V out. I don't care what kind of a common emitter or common collector or common base amplifier I'm dealing with. If you tell me find the resistance looking into a certain point of a circuit, I'm just going to follow the same steps. I'm going to turn off the independent voltage source. I'm going to turn any DC voltage source to ground, AC ground. And I'm going to draw this small signal model, right? So the base is actually connected to ground. The collector is also connected to ground. And then I have this pi model, right? The R pi and GMV pi, right? So R pi is, uh, so here is my base, here's my emitter, here's my collector. And I've connected my VX and IX to the emitter because that's where we, I want to find the resistance of it, right? Or the resistance looking from that point, okay? Now I'm ready to actually analyze the circuit. If I want to analyze the circuit, I would say that there's a current flowing here that is equal to, uh, so let's say this is I base, this is I collector, and this is I emitter, okay? I know that I base plus I collector is going to be equal to I emitter. Just, uh, or sorry, plus I emitter. Maybe I should have written a different naming or like at least change the direction. So let's call this I emitter. Okay, so this is equal to I emitter and I'm just using KCL, not in my knowledge of transistors. Okay, KCL at this point tells me IB plus IC is equal to IE with these directions. Now what is IB? IB is V pi divided by R pi, right? So the current flowing through this resistor is the, I'm using just the Ohm's law. Uh, what is IC? IC is GM V pi. And IE, well, it's negative IX, right? Just looking at the definition, they're the same current, opposite directions, okay? And that's what I wrote here. GM V pi plus VP, V pi over R pi is equal to negative IX. I make one other observation here, and I'm pretty much done after that. The observation is that, look at this note. Um, if I look at it from this path, let me draw it, from this path, I see zero, so let's call that, that's that's the emitter, right? So V emitter is equal to zero minus V pi, right? At the same time, I've connected V emitter to this Vx, so it's equal to Vx as well, if I write it from this path, okay? I just use KVL, so I can say that Vx, is equal to negative v pi. And using this, I'm going to replace any v pi here with negative vx. And that's how I actually relate vx and ix together using this equation. So vx over ix is going to be 1 over gm plus 1 over r pi. So this is the resistance that I see looking from the emitter. This is something that is hard to remember. That's why people try to actually simplify it a little bit using their knowledge of uh, normal values for beta. How does this relate to beta? So let's actually try to simplify this a little bit. So 1 over gm plus 1 over r pi could be rewritten as 1 over uh, gm r pi plus 1 over r pi. And then I bring this r pi up. It's going to be r pi over gm r pi plus one, okay? Now, I know that GM R pi is really beta, and I know that beta is actually somewhere between 50 to 200, typically 100, right? So I can say that this is approximately equal to, it's a, it's a big number, so I can say that beta plus one and beta are pretty much the same thing, so I can just replace this with GM R pi, and then the R pi's cancel out, and I get one over GM. And that's something that I like. As a lazy person, this is the kind of thing that I like to actually remember. So looking into the emitter of a transistor, and I want to make sure that you guys 
see this and uh, don't forget about this this is for the case that we're neglecting early effect so i don't have the r naught here we're going to see what happens when you add r naught later okay but if there is no r naught looking into the emitter of a transistor i see a resistance of one over gm that's easy to remember right so looking into the base i was seeing r pi looking into the emitter if there is no early effect i see one over gm looking into the collector i see just the r naught okay i hope this was clear